Due to popular request, this video is about how I made my surface plate. The one that you saw me using while I was making the Dixon style tool holders. But first, I would like to say thank you to all subscribers to my channel. I very much appreciate your continued support. I would also like to say to those that have just found my channel to subscribe and click the bell. I am constantly being asked how did I make my surface plate and what did I use to make it. So rather than keep writing the same story over and over again, I've decided to make a small video showing you what I used and how I made it. However, I don't need another one, but would like a couple of smaller honing plates, the process of which are exactly the same. It's important that you remember the reason why I made this surface plate. It was to assist me in marking out components and it was never intended to be used as a critically accurate device. But that doesn't mean you can't make it into an accurate surface plate. Search YouTube for Ox Tool Co and watch his video on surface plate calibration. There are also many more showing you how to complete this process yourself. My honing plates are going to be double sided, floor tiles on one side and marble on the other, both of which can be obtained from high street DIY stores. Now I'll get on and show you how I made it. It's important to remember that to get one surface plate you need to make three of equal size. The reason will become apparent later. Except in this case I'm only making two honing plates. The granite I used was a small section of 10mm thick kitchen worktop. This was obtained from a Main Street kitchen supply store. Because this little bit of granite that's 10mm thick is, it's inevitable that it was going to be quite flimsy and because at the time of making the first surface plate I'd just finished laying slabs in the back garden it occurred to me then that the piece of concrete paving slab would be the ideal medium to support the piece of granite because of its weight, thickness and stability. You'll need three pieces of course. This next bit is primarily for these two honing plates but if you want Skip along to the above indicated time to continue with information more consistent with the surface plate. To attach the first of two sets of tiles to the concrete slabs I use tile adhesive, again obtainable from high street DIY stores. Mixing this tile adhesive is quite simple. You simply add water to the advised quantity of tile adhesive. After mixing, evenly coat the concrete slabs and place the tiles on top, then leave them for a couple of days to fully set. Before I attach the marble tiles to the other side of these concrete slabs, I'm going to roughly hone each of these tiles against each other to remove the majority of the irregularities. The reason I'm doing this now is because floor tiles are very hard and it will take some doing to get them to wear each other flat. In this case the grinding medium I'm going to use is very coarse building sand and the slightly finer material that I have collected from underneath the grinder. Yes it may be contaminated with steel, iron and possibly coffee grinds but for now it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use the angle grinder to freehand cut a crosshatch on both of these honing plates. The crosshatch on these honing plates will capture excess abrasive material as a fine paste residue and redistribute the abrasive when in use. I want to reiterate that these two plates are not surface plates, they're going to be my lapping plates for small parts only and I'm using them to show you how I made my surface plate. The floor tile side of the process has now been roughed out 
and I'll now attach the two marble plates using the tile adhesive that should be mixed as per the package instructions. This part of the process is the same process I used for attaching the granite worktops to the slab on my surface plate. You can see here that I cracked one of these marble tiles. It's just going to have to stay as it is. After all, it won't affect anything and I'm not going to do it all again. This is where I marked up the three plates as A, B and C. What happened to my original B and C plates? Well, I needed some base pads for another garden project. Anyway, plate A is my current surface plate. Plate B and C are my pretend matching surface plates. Remember, this is only to show you how I did the original surface plate. The paste I'm applying is a 40 micron and later a 10 micron diamond paste. I got this from eBay. Because the plate to plate process is a very involved process, I'm cutting a very long video into a very short video for very obvious reasons. The grinding process was as follows. Plate A is fixed to the workbench. I position myself to one end of the A plate and then diamond place was applied using a very thin lubricant. I used WD-40. Stage 1. Plate B is placed on top and pushed back and forth a few times under its own weight while moving it from side to side. Then plate B is rotated 180 degrees and the same process is carried out. Plate B is rotated a further 90 degrees and the backward and forward process was carried out once more. Finally, plate B is rotated a further 180 degrees for the final manhandling. The next step was to reposition myself to the side of plate A and start stage 1 process all over again. In stage 2, Plate B is swapped with plate C, with more diamond plates added. Then stage 1 and stage 2 is repeated once more whilst using the plate C. Stage 3 is the stage 1 and 2 processes all over again, but between plate B and plate C until you have obtained the flatness that you want. These last few processes have to be done time and time again until you're satisfied with your requirements. Now I'm not going to go through the whole process because I don't need to, especially when there are excellent videos on YouTube that show you how to do this much better than I can. I often wipe graphite onto my surface plate because it helps keep the components I place on it to move very easily when I move them across the plate. The downside of course is that you can very often get very dirty hands just touching the plate. I made a pathetic effort to making a repeater meter by using a bit of scrap steel plate. I drilled three holes in the bottom, two at each corner at one end and one in the centre of the other end. Then I pressed in three hardened steel studs. This metal plate is placed on the surface plate and a DTI gauge mag mount was attached to it. The two feet position towards the DTI and the single stud has to be furthest away. The DTI was set reading zero on the surface plate with the point of contact at equally distant between the front and rear studs. The DTI is a one tenth of a thou clock and when swept along the plate shows you an amplified view of any out of level condition.
My surface plate is not going to win any awards for accuracy, however, it is good enough for the job it's got to do. That's all for now. I hope this answered some of your questions and once again, thanks for watching. Bye.